Seminar. Welcome to this channel dedicated to the Summa Theologia by St. Thomas Aquinas. I'm Dave Palmer, and in this video, we are going to talk about something that has been very much a, pa a part of our culture. People talk about them all the time, but do they really understand what guardian angels are? And I think in order to understand the Christian kind of meaning and definition of guardian angels, we have to go to St. Thomas Aquinas, of course, in the Summa Theologia. So that's what we're going to talk about uh, during the next few minutes. All right. St. Thomas Aquinas is teaching on the guardian angels. And we'll start off with um, his question about whether every man is guarded by an angel. And as you can probably imagine, he will say yes to this. He says, each man has an angel guardian appointed to him. This rests upon the fact that the guardianship of angels belongs to the execution of divine providence concerning men. But God's providence acts differently as regards men, as regards other corruptible creatures, for they are related differently to incorruptibility. Now, of course, we have a corruptible body, but an incorruptible soul. And so we're incorruptible like the angels, but corruptible like the brood animals. OK, so that's kind of what he's getting at here. For men are not only incorruptible in the common species, but also in the proper forms of each individual, which are also uh, the rational souls, which cannot be said of other incorruptible things. OK, the other incorruptible things would be the angels. They don't have souls because they don't have bodies united to them. Right. Uh, OK, so let's uh, now it is manifest that the providence of God is chiefly exercised towards that which remains forever, whereas regards things which pass away, the providence of God acts so as to order their existence to the things which are perpetual. OK, that makes sense. If something is going to last forever, well, then the things that are not going to last forever, like dogs and flowers and trees and bumblebees will be for the benefit of those things which last forever. Thus, the providence of God is related to each man as it is to every genus or species of things corruptible. But according to Gregory, the different orders are deputed to the different genera of things. For instance, the powers to coerce the demons, the virtues to work miracles in things corporeal. Um, while it is probable that the different species are presided over by different angels of the same order. Hence, it is also reasonable to suppose that different angels are appointed to the guardianship of different men. OK, so a long way to get to the fact that, yes, every man is going to have an angel assigned to him. OK, whether to guard men belongs only to the lowest order of the angels. Now, I did another video where we talked about the nine orders of choirs of angels, starting with the seraphim and the cherubim and then the, the angels are the very lowest, and then the archangels. And then in between, you've got the thrones and powers and virtues and principalities and dominations and that kind of thing. So Thomas says here, man is guarded in two ways. One, in one way, by a particular guardianship, according as to each man, an angel is appointed to guard him. And such guardianship belongs to the lowest order of the angels, whose place is, according to Gregory, to announce the lesser things, for it seems to be the least of the angelic offices to procure what concerns the salvation of only one man. The other kind of guardianship is universal multiplied according to the different orders. For the more universal an agent is, the higher it is. Thus, the guardianship of the human race belongs to the order of the principalities. Okay, they watch over the entire human race, which would mean that not only do we have a guardian angel, but we also have a principality that is looking over the entire um, human race. OK, uh, or perhaps the archangels whom we call the angel princes. Hence, Michael, whom we call an archangel, is also styled one of the princes, according to Daniel 1013. Moreover, all corporeal creatures are guarded by the virtues and likewise, the demons by the powers and the good spirits by the principalities, according to Gregory's opinion. So, again, Thomas is very ordered and he wants to be able to explain what exactly is the role of each of these orders of angels. Because if they didn't have specific functions and responsibilities, then there really be, would be really no point in having so many of them, right? Whether angels are appointed to the guardianship of all men. Now, this is kind of interesting. 
Man, while in this state of life, is, as it were, on a road by which he should journey towards heaven. On this road, man is threatened by many dangers, both from within and from without, according to Psalm 159. In this way wherein I walked, they have hidden a snare for me. And therefore, as guardians are appointed for men who have to pass by an unsafe road, so an angel guardian is assigned to each man as long as he is a wayfarer. When, however, he arrives at the end of life, he no longer has a guardian angel, but in the kingdom he will have an angel to reign with him, in hell a demon to punish him. So that seems to imply that the guardian angel's job is only while we are alive here on earth, and then when we get to heaven, or God forbid to hell, a different angel will be assigned to us there. That's at least how I read that. You can tell me if you disagree uh, with my interpretation of it, okay? Whether an angel is appointed to guard man from his birth. Now, I find this very interesting because as pro-life Christians, we believe that life begins at conception. So you would think and you would hope that Thomas would say the guardian angel is assigned a conception, but he doesn't say that, which is kind of interesting. As Origen observes, there are two opinions on this matter. For some have held that the angel guardian is appointed at the time of baptism, others that he is appointed at the time of birth. The latter opinion Jerome approves, and with this reason, for those benefits which are conferred by God on man as a Christian begin with his baptism, such as receiving the Eucharist and the like. But those which are conferred by God on man as a rational being are bestowed on him at his birth, for then it is that he receives that nature. Among the latter benefits, we must count the guardianship of angels, wherefore, from the very moment of his birth, man has an angel guardian appointed to him. This is really surprising to me because one of the reasons why Thomas didn't believe in the Immaculate Conception was because at animation, um, before animation, it was not a rational creature because ra rational creature requires a soul and a, and a body to unite, form and matter, right? So you would think that Thomas, believing that at conception or animation, you had a rational creature, that it was at that point that we would get a guardian angel, but clearly that's not what he said. All right, does an angel guardian ever forsake a man? Does he ever say like, all right, that's it, I'm out of here. Uh, <laughs> I've had enough of you. Uh, the guardianship of the angels is an effect of divine providence in regard to man. Now it is evident that neither man nor anything at all is entirely withdrawn from the providence of God. For insofar as a thing participates being, so far it is subject to the providence that extends over all being. God indeed is said to forsake man according to the ordering of his providence, but only insofar as he allows man to suffer some defect of punishment or a fault. In like manner, it must be said that an angel guardian never forsakes a man entirely, but sometimes he leaves him in some particular, for instance, by not preventing him from being subject to some trouble or even from falling into sin according to the order of divine judgments. In this sense, Babylon and the house of Israel are said to be to have been forsaken by the angels because their angel guardians did not prevent them from being subject to tribulation. Uh, a lot that could be said here. Um, and but basically, the the angel does not forsake the person, but we also learned previously that at death, the guardian angel is no longer really involved and in that perhaps another angel is assigned in heaven or a demon in hell. So uh, very interesting. Those are most of the articles that St. Thomas Aquinas uh, has about the guardian angels in particular. This is all found in Prima Pars under the governance of the world and how God uses creatures to manage creatures. All right, that does it. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much. Please comment. And also, if you are still watching, uh, thank you for, for still watching. And please visit my website, studythesuma.com, studythesuma.com, and you can find out how you can take a course on the entire Summa by me. Okay? Uh, thanks. God bless you.